Hi everyone and welcome to the weekly update with me, Richard Perry, Market Analyst at Handtech Markets. Each week I take you through the key events I believe will be driving your investments in the coming days. Now, moving into this new week, we still have the markets which are coming to terms with this new line from the Fed, those minutes from the Fed meeting in the end of April suggested that the market was needing to prepare for the possibility of a June or even July rate hike. The Fed speakers since uh, that FOMC meeting have certainly pretty much all towed the line on that regard as well. So the markets are now sort of repricing the probability now of at least the July rate hike. The, um, it's interesting though in the, uh, in, the, in the wake of those Fed minutes, the sort of potential for a June rate hike it sort of went up to around about 30, 35, but have now sort of come off slightly in terms of the probability percentages. And uh, it's interesting that also the bond yields have started to drop away a little bit, or at least sort of pause in their move higher. Now we've seen on the back of this move or this repricing, the dollar significantly sort of moving um, in, a, in a strengthening fashion, but that now is starting to stutter. And it's sort of coming up to a point at which the dollar is testing some key levels, certainly against the yen, and also coming back towards sort of a key long-term pivot on the euro as well. So it really is uh, an interesting time at the moment and um, sort of this move into this week, sort of we, we have this focus, this renewed focus on um, data dependency. And uh, the data this week that we've got are sort of looking up, not massively important, but certainly the uh, there are still some uh, sort of relatively important data points like new home sales, you've got durable goods, and we'll finish off the week with a second look at growth because growth now seems to be a third element that the uh, the Fed is really is focusing on, and uh, it wants to see improving growth into Q2. So certainly the, the second reading of um, of GDP for Q1 will be uh, an interesting data point at the end of this week. Certainly if it's uplifted from the 0.5 percent that we saw at the um, at the first reading. So where do the markets sit? Well, we've got the forex markets, which, as I said, dollar strengthening, but. Is it sort of coming up to a little bit of a key sort of crossroads area? So sort of, we're seeing the euro dollar, which sort of lost the support at um, 12.15 last week. Now the next level is 11.42. But my thinking is it's going to be coming back towards 11 figure, which is sort of a long term pivot line um, that's been in place for the last sort of 16 months or so. In terms of your sterling, well, you've got that added sort of volatility aspect of the Brexit debate and um, you constantly get sort of news around Brexit sort of you get to see sterling pushing higher then pulling lower and it's interesting that um, we're still finding that um, and I think that's going to just continue to ramp up in the coming weeks the volatility on sterling is going to remain pretty high so I think um, sterling is going to struggle to really trend at the moment it's sort of pulling on a slightly more positive uh, bias at the moment as the uh, sort of pro as the um, Opinion polls seem to be sort of moving towards the Remain vote, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. But certainly at the moment, for, uh, cable seems to be relatively well supported above 44 figure. In terms of dollar yen, again, as I said, we've had that sort of bounce, that near term rebound, we're around sort of two and a half, three weeks for the dollar. Is it starting to come up against a lot of technical resistance? Um, it could well be seen, but uh, you've also got the added aspect of this G7 meeting whereby. And the US was sort of mentioning that um, it didn't really like the fact that the interventionist uh, approach that Japan was probably possibly going to be taking for the yen. So that's sort of taken a little bit of heat out of the dollar yen rally and um, sort of suggested that perhaps the yen might start to strengthen again. So that's an interesting aspect as well. In terms of your indices, well, you're seeing top hat is sort of developing all over the place. Really, the markets are not really able to get any real traction. You sort of towards the end of earnings season, it's not really sort of got any real positives to drive now. The market is sort of looking towards this Brexit and, and the potential for the volatility aspect and um, maybe even a Brexit vote. Although, again, as I said, it's not likely, but still it's a, it's a possibility. And that is another reason why sort of maybe markets are a little bit sort of um, sort of being held back at the moment, but certainly the, um, the these big top patterns, um, 2034 is the key level on the S&P 500, you've got 9737, which is your initial key support protecting 9500 on the DAX, and 6036 on the FTSE that it needs to hold. In terms of your commodities, well, you've, as I said, the, the strengthening um, of the dollar is negative for um, 
commodity prices, certainly the gold prices continue to slide. Oil has seemed to be sort of holding up okay, although it is stuttering a little bit. You've still got the improving fundamentals behind the oil price, which are helping to sort of maintain the oil bull rally. Um, but uh, it is still sort of stuttering a little bit, and there's questions over what, what the next direction will be. I still think that corrections are going to be a chance to buy on oil. But uh, certainly the gold price is in a bit of a corrective mode at the moment, and certainly if that dollar continues to strengthen, you could imagine that that gold price correction would continue. So what are we looking out for for the remainder of this week? Well, we've got a little bit of German data. You've got the EFO and you've got the ZEW, which both do have links to German growth, and uh, that could have an uh, sort of a driving impact on the DAX and the euro um, through the early parts of the week. We're also looking at, as I said, this US data. But also on top of that, you've got the uh, added interest of the uh, Japanese CPI. Is uh, inflation in Japan going to again fall further into deflationary territory? That's the expectation, and what would that push the, um, the BOJ into doing, or could there be further sort of uh, moves to ease monetary policy on the back of that? So that will be interesting. But the US data will certainly be the key focus, I think, with GDP, the pinnacle, at the end on Friday. So I wish you good luck in your trading throughout this week, and I will speak to you next time.